Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. So today, once again, a very good game and a very exciting game, a game between the third world champion and the fourth world champion. So, Jodoro Capablanca versus uh, Alexander Aljechin. I'm going to pronounce it Aljechin, not Aljochin or Elekain. This is uh, how I was taught to pronounce it. And uh, this game, unfortunately for you guys, wasn't played in the, the world championship match or any match from that era where at least one of them was a world champion. This is actually from their first encounter in 1913 in the Savering Cup. A cup held by Mr. Named Saverin, who actually decided to invite Capablanca to Russia uh, in St. Petersburg to play against some Russian guys. And one of them was uh, Alexander Alekhin, and the other two were... Uh, let me just uh, see that Znosko Borovsky and Dus Chotimirsky. So sorry for that. I couldn't just remember these two guys' names. Uh, one thing, they are very hard to pronounce and the other, they are really strange names to me. So I hope I did at least a partially good job doing that. And uh, I think this is pretty much it. One fun fact. Uh, for the end, before showing you this uh, uh, game, uh, Alexander Aljechin and Capablanca are actually friends at this point in history. So even uh, Capablanca tried sometimes to show some positions uh, in, and show some improvements to Aljechin to actually improve his game. Uh, and uh, I'm just saying that because some of you may know uh, the match that will be held, uh, held later on uh, between the two for actually the championship. Uh, will be filled with controversy and a lot of problems, uh, so Aljechin will win, but as I said, on uh, very dubious circumstances. But uh, more about that in the future. For now, we have this and first game between the third and the fourth world champion. Uh, so, let me show you. D4, D5. So, as we can see, uh, Capablanca doesn't go for E4, and uh, which usually would allow Aljechin to play knight to F6. A very famous Aljechin defense. So, for some of you who don't know, e4, knight to f6 is called Aljechin defense by the fourth world champion. Instead of that, we have the Slav defense with c4, c6, and now e3. Knight to f6, knight to f3. Uh, Capablanca decides to keep this bishop here, not to develop it on f4 or g5, and now we have e6. A standard setup for the Slav these three pawns here and uh, this is something called a quiet variation of the slab defense so let's just see how quiet it is knight from b to d2 and knight from b to d7 bishop to d3 bishop to e7 and both players castle king side and here in this position uh, we see that uh, okay both of the players need to make some plan usually what whites do uh, what white tries to do either expand on the queen side uh, maybe at some point push c5 to block off the position or he tries to open up the center and with queen to c2, rook to d1 or e1, attack on the king side. But on the other side, black uh, wants to definitely take the pawn here, doesn't want to really be cramped in with the push to, pushing of the c5 pawn and at some point he wants to push e5 or c5 in order to open up the position and uh, just uh, try to develop this light square bishop which is usually a problem in the slav defense for black. Here we have queen to c2 going for the h7 pawn, knight is kind of pinned so d takes on c4. But we have knight captures on c4 and now both knights are attacking on e5. Because of that c5 is played. Now we have knight, to, knight from c to e5 and c takes on d4, e takes on d4. Uh, white is left, so Capablanca is left with the isolated uh, pawn in the center, and black still only has a problem of this uh, dark square bishop. So both sides have some problems, uh, and some weaknesses, not problems, but weaknesses in the position. Knight to b6 is played, opening up the queen, and now we have multiple defenders on the d5 square, so d5 won't be pushed anytime soon. Now, probably Aljechin's uh, idea of uh, continuing the game would be pressuring the d4 pawn. But uh, with this move he actually allows knight to g5. And now al already after 12 moves in the game we see uh, Capablanca's pieces just eyeing those pawns on the king side. And yeah, already Aljechin has to address some threats. He has to play g6 because otherwise the capture on h7 or knight jumps on h7 or f7 would be deadly. So here uh, Capablanca decides to return the knight, also possible queen to d2. I mean, uh, you don't have to be, after g6, you don't have to be afraid of the queen capture because you can capture on f7, rook captures and the other knight captures and 
king cannot capture on f7 because of bishop to g6, a very famous motif of a discovered attack and picking up the queen. So here, white has won the, p uh, won the exchange, and after e5, knight to g5, he has uh, a very comfortable game. So uh, this is one of the options, but uh, it isn't intuitive to play queen to sorry queen to d2 and continue with the attack on the h file uh, on the h file on this diagonal uh, on the dark squares with the queen rather here uh, capablanca played the knight back so that the bishop can come on this diagonal uh, here we have king to g7 and bishop to g5 now um, now we have a knight from b to d5 so centralizing the knight always a good move and now rook from a to c1 so leaving for a bit the attack on the on the king side also queen to d2 was possible here a couple blanca first wanted to play the rook on the c file because it is open and you want to uh, have uh, yeah have your pieces on it here we have bishop to d7 developing and now queen to d2 now we have knight to g8 and the uh, idea is yeah to stop bishop to h6 of course because then comes check and you uh, you will take the rook so that is the one of the reason and the other is to exchange pieces here and uh, Capablanca accepts that uh, bishop takes uh, queen takes and uh, here already we see that the the the, ta the attacking chances have somewhat diminished and uh, yeah Capablanca will have to look for something else we have bishop to e4 here and now Alekin could have just played knight to f6, uh, knight from g to f6, stabilizing the center, and this would be just the drawn position. But he decided to play bishop to b5, attacking the rook, and rook comes to e1. So something that uh, Kapalanka would play either way, and now we have queen to d6. Uh, probably the move that uh, yeah lost all the activity for black, and all, lost all the chances for black, because we have bishop to d5, queen, queen cannot capture because of rook to c5, and you lose the bishop. So the pawn has to take and now queen to a5. A very good move because you're threatening to come on c7 with the queen or with the rook and also you're attacking the bishop. So a6 defending the bishop and queen to c7. Now you're pressuring on f7, knight, knight is threatening to jump on g5. Also the rooks are developed so white is in a much better position. Queen captures and rook captures and now a6 is played stopping knight to, knight to g5 jump. We have rook takes on b7, taking the pawn, and now rook from a to c8, looking for some counterplay, yeah, maybe going rook to c2. But now we have b3, and here in this position, uh, yeah, Aliakin just played a move that uh, kind of lost his game, lost him this game, because after rook to c2, a4 was played, and yeah, essentially... Capablanca didn't stop from that moment on, he just went for the attack. Here, better was maybe to play rook to b8 instead of... Uh, instead of uh, so after b3 even then rook to b8 in order to try exchange this rook so that there is no pressure on the seventh rank but as i said rook to c2 was played and now a4 bishop to e2 and knight to h4 now both of these knights are attacking the g6 and this knight is attacking on f7 as long as well as this rook and uh, you cannot ch you cannot stop this attack uh, alekin played h5 the knight took on uh, g6, this pawn is pinned, and as well, this knight is attacking the rook. A rook moved to e8, but now you have rook to f7 check. King goes to h6, and now f4. Already in this position, uh, Aliakin could have just resigned, but he decided to play on. As you can see, with f4, he, uh, Capablanca is limiting the squares where the black king can go to. Now, Aliakin played a5. A move without a purpose, maybe the only reason is to put the bishop on a6, but that doesn't accomplish anything uh, here we have knight to h4 threatening knight to, knight to f5 checkmate so we have a rook sacrifice on e5 f captures on e5 and now king to g5 g3 defending the knight king comes to g4 so Alekin try to maybe come closer with the king and maybe give a checkmate or something i'm not really sure we have rook to g7 check king can go only to h3 and now after knight to g2 uh, Alek can actually resign the game. So you don't want to take the knight. A knight to g2 is the best move because black cannot stop knight to f4 checkmate. So yeah, uh, the first encounter between the third and the fourth world champion at that point, future world champions, ended up in uh, Capablanca's favor. So very good of him, uh, a very nice attack and a very good game. 
Uh, and yeah, this is the first round of this cup and the first win for Capoblanca. I will show you one other game from this cup and then I will actually tell you did Capoblanca manage to win the cup. So just to remind you, in order to win the cup, he mustn't lose uh, against any of the three players. So against Alekhin and Znoska Borowski and Dus Chotimirski. Uh, and uh, yeah, if he doesn't lose, then he will win the cup. Uh, he, and the cup is played in round robin two times, so uh, Capablanca is playing with white and with black pieces against the three players. And yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. Have nothing else to add. Uh, hope you enjoyed the first game I've covered on this channel by Alekhin. And yeah, I would like to thank you for watching this video, and I will see you next time.